Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Instability and Oscillations of Inverters and Converters, Bus Capacitor, and this is a part one of two-part presentation. I'd like to thank Stas Tichkin for the great lab testing and measurement. And please look for the forthcoming part two, which will include practical cases and solutions. The issue that I'm talking about is oscillation of bus capacitors in an inverter. And here is a real case. These are real measurements. We have here an inverter, a three-phase inverter. This is the motor. We are measuring the phase current, the voltage on the bus capacitor. There's the battery here. And what we see is these are the phase currents. Well, they are distorted because there is a lot of oscillation on the bus capacitors. Notice that this is a 5 volt per division. This is a 50 volt system, that is the battery is 50 volt. So this is quite a bit. And lo and behold, see how these oscillations are running away. There is uh, actually an instability here, clearly, and if not uh, stopped here, it would have caused a failure. So this is a real problem that we are now facing. In, in the industry, and I'm going to discuss it to see what are the reasons and how to correct and remedy the problem. This is a two-part presentation. In the first part, which is this one, I'm going to discuss the issue of negative input resistance of inverters, converters with constant output power, and then to develop an intuitive understanding of the mathematics involved and the parameters involved in this negative resistance. I'm trying to do it in an intuitive way, not too many equations, although there will be some. In part two, I'm going to discuss the instability in some practical system to show actual examples, and then to point to possible solution to the problem of instability. So let me first of all discuss the question of negative input resistance to inverters and converters, incremental resistance, which was pointed out and discussed and studied first by Professor Middlebrook. Many consider him as the father of modern power electronics. And in this paper, input filter consideration in the design and application of switching regulators of 1976, he discussed the issue of negative input resistance to a system and showed that under some condition, this negative impedance with a filter will cause instability and oscillation. And furthermore, he showed ways to solve the problem by adding some damping circuit. So the first issue that I'm going to discuss is why do we see negative resistance? Well, intuitively, it's clear that the input resistance is negative, and that is the, for the following reason. Suppose we have a load, say a constant current, and we are controlling it to a constant voltage, so it's constant power load. So now, if the voltage will go up at the input, for the same power, the current will go down. So we have a change of direction, and therefore the incremental resistance will be negative. This is clear. But what are the values? What are the parameters here? So let me develop it in a quick way. If we assume that the power is constant and we define the incremental resistance as R sub i, then V sub i is P over i. This is because V over i is P. And then I'll take the derivative of this and here is what I get, dv is p over i squared and a minus sign here. Okay. That's the first indication we're talking about negative resistance. And then uh, di, taking di over here, this is a definition of the incremental resistance. And we see that it is equal to minus p over i squared. This is the power, the constant power, over the i square, this is the specific operating point you are at. Now I can replace this P by V times I, and therefore 
you get the incremental resistance being equal to V sub i over i sub i. That is the V over i minus sign. This is the incremental or negative incremental resistance. Next thing I'm going to discuss is why is it that if you have a negative resistance connected say to a filter like this, an LC filter, why will it cause instability? Well, you can sort of uh, hand wave here and then explain it in a different way, but I'm going to do it rigorously, but hopefully in a simple way. So, first of all, let's see what is the transfer function between V in and V out. This is this impedance, these two are in parallel, here it is, and then this is the transfer function between the input and output. Now, this parallel parameter now this parallel network comes up to be this expression, so therefore the transfer function from here to here is as shown here. Now I'm doing sort of reorganizing this uh, equation, and I'm looking now at the denominator, which is here, and the numerator. I'm not that much interested in the numerator because the denominator is the so-called characteristic impedance, and we know that a dynamic system will be unstable when the roots or poles of this polynomial, of this characteristic impedance, are at the right half of the complex plane. That is, I have to solve here to find what are the roots of this polynomial, what are the solution for it, and if it is on the right, if they are positive, that's bad news. So here it is. This is the quadratic equation, this is the solution, and in our case, this, this is the second order equation, this is the solution here. I'm taking out L here, so this is what I'm ending up. So it is clear, because I have here minus one, this has to be larger than, than one for the whole thing to be positive, and, and positive meaning unstable. Now obviously this would be positive, if R will be negative. If this is negative, then this will always be positive. So therefore, it is clear that if the resistance here is negative, we are getting an unstable system because we have a right half plane pole, and therefore, in the time domain, this system will diverge. That is, it will be unstable. Next thing I'm going to discuss, which is very simple, is what happens if you have a positive resistance and a negative resistance? Well, you take the parallel combination of these, you get this expression, and it is clear now that for this to be negative, for this to be negative, then the absolute value of R2 has to be smaller than R1. Because if the absolute value of R2 is larger than R1, then we have a negative denominator, and therefore this is positive. So again, for this combination to be negative, resistance, we have to have this absolute value of R2 to be smaller than R1. And this means that if we have two resistors, one positive and one negative, if R2 is indeed smaller than R1, that is the absolute value, then we are going to get um, oscillation. Notice that what does it mean that R2 is small? R2 is small means that we have higher power, okay? The higher the power, the lower they are. So we can understand now that a system could be stable at low power and then will be unstable at higher power. Next thing that I need to do, because we are going to use it later on, is to discuss the case of this filter, which has a ESR, resistance in series with the capacitor, and then we have a converter, which has a negative incremental resistance, and the question is, is this going to be stable or not? Now, this is kind of complex, because now this resistance is here, and on this branch, so it's not clear. It'll be easier if we can describe this system 
this way, okay? If I can translate this circuit to this circuit, then I have two resistors in parallel, and therefore if the net resistance here, the equivalent resistance is negative, I know it's bad news, okay? So next thing is to see how I can translate this to this. And the way I'm going to do it is the following. I am looking at one circuit and I'm considering it as in fact a resonant circuit with some series resistance here. Here I'm considering it as a parallel resonant circuit and if you don't see that this is parallel I've just taken this uh, feminine equivalent, okay? I've looked here and this is now a current source and lo and behold, you see that this is a parallel resonant circuit. Now, the idea of e equating these two is the following. I'm saying that for this circuit to be equal to this in performance, the quality factor here should be equal to the quality factor here, or the quality factor here should be in fact equal to this one. Because the quality factor is the ratio between the reactive energy and the dissipative energy and if these are to be the same circuit same behavior i i like to have the two quality factors the same so what is the quality factor here this is this expression this is the characteristic impedance square root i mean missing here a square root okay i'm sorry so this is z over rc and what is the quality factor here it is the reverse, this is the resistance divided by the characteristic impedance, okay? Equating these two, I am getting that RP, this resistance, okay, the parallel resistance, the equivalent parallel resistance describing this case, is equal to L over C, this is Z square, divided by R sub C. R sub C is the original circuit. So now I have a tool to transfer this to this, which makes it easier. So let's see if all what I've said holds water, okay? So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to run a simulation of two circuits, one which has a series ESR to the capacitor like this, and one which has this parallel combination, no resistance here. I've chosen, chosen L to be 0.16 and C 0.16, and this is to normalize it to a characteristic impedance of one, and the 0.16 is one over two pi, which will make the resonant frequency one hertz. This is just normalization, okay? So, now I have here a current source which actually acts as a constant power source because I have defined the current as P over V bus. So the I over V bus here will be equal to P, that is I will be adjusted such as at any given time the power of this unit is P. Okay, everything is parameterized here, and once I'm defining RC, then I'll get everything else. In fact, I've parameterized the whole system to the Q, that is, I'll be sweeping the Q from which RC is calculated, and then RP is also calculated. This is Z square RC, Z is 1, okay? so. Uh, over uh, C, all these are what I've shown earlier. So now let's take a specific example. So as I've said, Z is one, Q sub S is Z over RC. This is the definition of the quality factor in the series resonance, from which RC is one over Q, RP is one over RC, because Z is one and Z squared is also one, and this is the incremental resistance, Ri is P over V bus. So now I've taken a case of Q equal to 100, Rc to 10 milliohms, 
RP comes up to be 100 milliohms. Okay, so because it's one over the Q here, I mean the Z here is one, so one over 10 milliohm is 10 ohms. So what I'm getting here is that the instability point is when the power is larger than 10 milliohm. This is for this particular case, of course. Now the excitation of this unit is a step between 0.9 and 1. Again, I'm normalizing it to 1. And when the system is stable, I'm expecting to see a stable behavior. And when it's not, it's supposed to uh, start diverging. So here it is. This is for the case of power equal to 0. It should be stable. Q is 100, the step is 0.9 to 1, and obviously it's a high Q, so therefore you see this uh, transient phenomena. Oscillation is 1 hertz because of the choice of the values of L and C, uh, but you see definitely that this is a stable system. I can see also the behavior at the AC, or small signal analysis, and I see that, again, the transfer function, well, Q is high, it's 100, so it's 40 dB. And what I'm seeing here is both for the series and parallel cases, that is for here and here, I'm getting same response here. This is one on top of the other. Well, there is a small changes. I should say that this translation is not absolutely accurate there's some approximation here but as you can see it's really pretty good and we can see the same match here this is one on top of the other uh, there's a small change here but in general we see that the parallel representation well shows that the behavior of the original circuit now I've made P equal to 8 millivolt this is below the 10 milliwatt. Well, it's less damped, as you can see, it goes down slower as compared to this case with P equal to zero. But it is still stable system because eventually it'll die out. Now here it is, when the power is 10 milliwatt, this is according to the calculation based on the development, this mathematical development that I've shown. Based on this, I see that indeed when the power loading is 10 milliwatt, we are sort of the verge of an oscillator. And when the power is larger, 12 milliwatt, it's growing up, the system is clearly unstable. So we can see that these relationships that I have developed really show up very nicely in the simulation and they seem to validate uh, this approach. So, what have we seen in this part one? We've seen that there is a negative incremental resistance to converters and inverters. We understand that the negative resistance can cause oscillation when an input filter is connected. I've developed a method to convert the series resistor to the parallel resistor, which is very convenient for examining and analyzing real circuits. And then I've developed a method to locate the point of instability by this expression that I've developed. And then I verified these models by simulation. So in this presentation, I cover the issue of negative input resistance and develop this mathematical foundation. In the forthcoming video, I'm going to discuss some practical issue with some examples and also to show some possible solutions to the instability. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.